Okay, now on this fish, um, a lot of the facial markings, uh, you can see them, although it's dried out, you can still see them. Instead of replicating, uh, go ahead and just trace over the marks that are still there. And I'm going to use a Sharpie pen again because the Sharpie pen will, will show through all the other colors. Um, it may be the chemicals in the ink of the Sharpie pen or it could be just the transparent factor in the paints that I use. Or maybe a little of both. But <clears throat> all these marks right here, you know, at one time they were uh, kind of a turquoise blue uh, color. So I'm going to go ahead and mark them with a Sharpie pen so we'll know where to put them when we're done. And you don't have to do this, but I just, I like to do it because sometimes I think it has more natural effect if you put them back exactly where they were before. Then we'll proceed with a coat of white and then white pearl over that. Uh, a couple more things to pay attention to. Even when you're putting the marks on, it's probably good to look at reference material because you can't see all of them. And... Uh, a lot of times, according to the picture you use, every, one, every fish is different, even within a species. You know, the intensity of the marks varies. Um, even the colors can range from orange to red in fish in certain aspects. Um, I would stick with one reference and use it to the finish as far as putting your barrings on. Um, and notice how the marks tend to radiate almost like through the eye and even through the mandible on, on the lip. They tend to hold their pattern and radiate through those things, and that adds to the prettiness of it. <clears throat> the spotting, some, notice how some of it radiates into the tail and into the anal fin and into the soft dorsal, and I've replicated that. <clears throat> and I, I tended to stay true to what the natural marks were, but in some cases you may want to vary a little bit. I've also noticed even the ear flap, you know, the ear itself will differ from fish to fish. The shape of the ear, I've run into that several times too. Okay, what we've done here is we've uh, went ahead and whitened it, and then we put a coat of white pearl on it, and then we cleaned the eye off so we wouldn't have a white ring on it. A lot of people wait until they paint their fish, and then the last thing they do is clean the eye. But a lot of times it'll leave a white ring if you got if you painted it white first. When you look at a long ear, what's the first thing that stands out or reaches out and grabs you? Um, well, it's those emerald green turquoise marks. And that's what you want to stand out. The main thing you want to watch out for is making sure the preceding colors or your base colors, uh, if you will, are dark enough before, before putting the turquoise marks on and if the background is too light the bright marks won't come forwards or stand out you know and so you need the depth created by having the background darker and that's all I wanted to say before we get started Okay, our next color is going to be yellow. Uh, any yellow would work, yellow ochre or bright yellow even. Um, we're just going to put some on the breast area, a little on the midsection and the top because it shows in the reference. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm just going to put a light coat of I wouldn't say very light, not a medium, uh, a medium to light coat, some of that ring. Uh, you let your reference go. If you can see the color, let that judge your intensity that you need to put it on by. And it's good to have several reference pictures, that way you've got plenty of them to go by. It does kind of peek through a little bit to the other colors, although it is kind of a base color, but it does show.
I mean, it's a color that's so far underneath it probably doesn't matter a whole lot how intense it is. It'll probably make it pretty intense and still cover up pretty good. Gotta kind of find a happy medium as far as how good to put it on. I'd say anywhere from a medium to a light coat, and I'll show you. from the belly and you don't really want it to get really any lighter because that's all you all you would need is a light your turquoise is turquoise marks and then your turquoise marks aren't going to show up yet because it's bright right there in the middle Make sure you hit all the fins with it, you know, for a good even color. Now I've got a little bit of gill red. I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of it. Uh, this is not a necessity, uh, but it, it's all according to your reference. But just to add a little bit of brightness to it, it's a bright fish anyway. And I'm going to take advantage of some of this gill red. And put some on the anal the tail and the soft dorsal.
And I'm even going to put a little bit on the belly and add some good contrast here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go over uh, everything with medium green. Okay, I'm just going to give it a preliminary, uh, just the fins in the back, mainly just a little bit of green, maybe a little bit on the side. Because we're going back over this with rich browns our next color anyway, so we want to just to kind of mist it in there. We're just going to get the green and then the rich brown. We don't want to kill our teal red. We do want to give kind of a greenish tint to what we're doing. Some of them have a medium green in it. So you gotta let your reference be your guide. Okay, that's good enough. And you can use this color to color the back of your pants too. Okay, what we've done here is we've gotten uh, a little neon blue or paint gray, anything that's kind of a blue color. And I went ahead and misted my bars on them. Go ahead and pronounce them just a little bit more. And then when we put our marks on, then I'll go over my mark. Uh, I'll, I'll do it again. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, that's good enough. They go, they, they go here just down the back. It's way up on top. I mean, you don't want to go down far at all with these bars. Uh, but now the bars, you want them to run the whole length of the fish. So if you think you need to carry them down a little farther, please do. From here on out, we're bluing the fish up pretty much. Everything we're putting on it now is either a, a shade of blue or green. And if you look at the markings, you can see how they go through the head and how they radiate from the back up into the fins and how they get a little bit more sparse down toward the breast. Well, we're going to replicate all those. We're going to put them all in. Um, if you're good enough with an airbrush and get your paint to flow right, which I have before, um, not not in the, using these particular markings, but um, 
if if you feel like you're better off using a brush then improvise and use a brush and what we're going to do we're going to mix our paint we're going to use turquoise and to get a little bit of a pearly effect i'm going to i'm going to shoot for getting a little bit of a pearly effect okay what we're doing now we're just using turquoise and we're putting the marks back in we're using a thinnest hairbrush we can find and being tedious about it to make sure the marks look right use your reference or even your sharpie pen markings and we'll blacken the ear mark with a sharpie pen that way we've got total control over shaping the ear and then I'll show you what we do next after we put all the markings in that's the back and everything all the markings that are in your reference try to put them in there now I went ahead and put all my, my markings in using turquoise and you can see how the, the turquoise marks went over the barring pattern that we had put on earlier and you can see how I put a little on the spiny right on the on the on the spiny dorsal I've put it on pretty heavy this is according to my reference now every fish is different um, notice how the the marks uh, dissipate virtually to nothing as they approach the belly and the breast and that is in all my references and as I get up like up past the the fin that's on the side the markings start getting pretty heavy and going up about around halfway up the tail and as you get up towards the back they're pretty steady and basically all I'm doing is touching the back of of the scales the scales are in rows you can see they're kind of in rows I'm touching the back of every scale just like I would if I was painting a bass with an airbrush just making the you know just going the very back of the scale how it did how the back of the scale dish bowls that's what I'm doing with my brush uh, just dish just using my brush and and paint the back of each scale, each row of scales and it kind of dish bowls and every now and then there'll be a scale missing and I miss it that adds to the natural effect because they're not all just normal patterns they break up a little and you can see how I'm on the soft fins, the anal, the soft dorsal, and the tail. How I hit some of the rays of the fins. But I didn't go all the way out to the end, although I have before, but not on this particular fish. I decided to not get too carried away with it on this. And just kind of put it on the spiny rays in a fan-like pattern. Like towards the end of both sides of the fin. You know they shorten down and then towards the middle of the fin I'd extend it up a little bit higher and kind of just kind of fanned it out a little bit that way and of course I hit the outer edges of the soft dorsal the anal and the tail also along with the spiny dorsal so now we're going to use medium green and touch up the top of the head and the back a little bit and add a little bit of green and blue to this fish okay. <clears throat> on this fish you can see I hit just the top of the head it's in my reference the very top of the head and up the top of the back and the fins and so that's what I'm going to do. I don't even go around the eye, although it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. I could do it and it wouldn't be too bad, but I'm sticking with my reference, what my reference is. There is a reflective ring quality on the fish in places. I don't want to get carried away with the green. It goes down the back. It's at the bottom of the fin where the turquoise is. It does tend to have a hazy green look. The fins. 
even the spiny dorsum. Definitely the fins. You can see the green in this. And, and towards the base of the tail, you can see some green. In more than one reference. And the green definitely shows in the fins. So if I see it, I'm putting it on there. out at the lateral line. You don't want to put this on too thick because you can get carried away and destroy the effect you're wanting to achieve. There's even a little hint of green on the bottom of the jaw. And the bottom of the cheek. So I'm going to put that in there. Okay. And we're done with that color. Okay, now I'm running a little bit of neon blue. And I'm just putting it a little bit on on the spiny dorsal. And I may carry it just just pinning a little bit down the midsection of the fish. A little bit on the fins. I don't want to kill out my green. I may go a little bit just on the back just a little bit, and that's good enough. You, you probably don't even need to do that if you don't want to. Now our next color is going to be Payne's Gray. Oh, you can use this for your bars, too. To intensify the bars, go ahead and use your neon blue. You can use your Payne's Gray also. See how I've done that? The neon blue, it has a, a fluorescent quality. And so you still get your barring effect. And that adds depth, a little bit of a three-dimensional quality to your fish. Now we're going to go over the back and highlight the fins with Payne's Gray and we'll be done. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and highlight the fins with Payne's Gray and we just want some detail on these fins. Uh, we don't want to kill everything out, we just want some good detail. Kind of blues everything up. I don't want to kill that green that we put on top of the head because that's I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fish sideways. And what I'm doing here I'm highlighting the fins. Angle spring, you know. But I don't want to kill everything I put in earlier. 
but I noticed in some of my reference, it's actually darker towards the outer part of the fin, so I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do the back while I got it this way. I basically want to stay just right up on the back. I don't want to get carried away. I don't want to lose what I've been trying to accomplish here. Also. Okay, now I'm going to get the anal and the other fins. Basically, all we're doing is just highlighting the things because we want some, want some details. Gotta have details that makes the fish real, you know. These front fins, you can even be like there's a regular bass or a bluegill. Gotta darken that up. Probably went a little bit too dark. But. the tail. I'm coming in from the rear. I'm going to clean the eye off and color my ear back. Okay, um, I went ahead and cleaned the eye off and um, colored the ear black. But I also went ahead and put a little, missed a little bit more gill red on them fins. But you got to be careful when you put Payne's gray on a fin and put gill red, you come up with purple. So you got to I just wanted to conclude this paint schedule. Uh, if you feel like the bars are a little bit too light, you can go ahead and darken them up just a little bit. And that's what we're doing here. There we go. You may even, if you feel like you gotta blue, blue things up a little bit more, you can go down a little bit farther. You wanna keep, you wanna do things within reason though. You don't wanna mess the whole fish up. You wanna. 
I have seen that yellow, and I've seen it almost a flesh color, kind of a yellow orange, and I've also seen it a flesh color. And but my reference, it was the same color as just turquoise. So all fish are different. And as far as the fins, uh, you could omit the gill red and just make it real good and bright orange, just like the belly. And you may want to go that route. And there you go. There time to do that. I guess late's better than never. Okay, first you need to seal the fish with a sealer. Then you need white. Then you need white pearl, yellow ochre, bright orange, gill red, rich brown, turquoise, neon blue, Payne's gray, and medium green. And that's the colors you need. I didn't like how blue it was on the back, and I tied the blue in with the green a little bit more. I just put how blue it was on the back, and I tied the blue in with the green a little bit more. I just put a little bit more green on the back, and I feathered it down from the top, faded it out about halfway down. I didn't want to completely green everything out, so I left the blue markings in the mid, mid to low section. I pretty much left them alone. But I, I tied in my green with my blue a little bit better on the back to get more of a green-blue or blue-green fish. That helped out a lot. And you can also do that on the green sunfish. If it's a little bit too brown or maybe not enough green, green's a good color to tie in. And it seems to help.